Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming September of 2017 Premier Auction. And today, I want to take a look at a question that kind of comes up a lot, and that is, through the developmental history of firearms, people often go out on a limb and take a chance on some brand new system with, let's say, specialized ammunition that may or may not end up being widely available. This happens all the time, and when you're lucky, if you're an early adopter, the system will take off, and you'll be able to get ammunition for your gun forever. But if you're not lucky, you end up with something like a Dardic uh, triangular cartridge revolver, or Remington Etronics ammunition that you can't find primers for anymore, or perhaps you have a Jennings repeating rifle that you can't get rocket ball ammunition for. So what do you do with it at that point? Well. This is a Jennings uh, rifle that had exactly that problem. And in fact, it wasn't just the people who might have bought Jennings repeaters, it was also the guys making them. So, uh, a very brief history of the Jennings. Uh, this started out as a project designed by a guy named Walter Hunt. He designed the Hunt Volitional Repeater, which was basically the first in what would eventually, through a long and rambling story, become Winchester repeating rifles. Uh, Walter Hunt was a designer, he didn't have the mo really any money to build any of this stuff, so he partnered up with a guy named George Aerosmith, who was his financial arm, basically, uh, designed the gun, and boy, it was kind of complicated and not, not really ready for prime time. In fact, there's only one of them that's known to exist. Uh, so George Aerosmith hires a guy named uh, Lewis Jennings. So George Aerosmith hires a guy named Lewis Jennings, who is also an engineer and designer, to come in and take this uh, volitional repeater from Hunt and improve it. And Jennings does. And Jennings actually turns it into this. He simplifies the bolt mechanism quite a lot. He replaces this weird spring-loaded firing pin system with pill priming, which worked better. Uh, however, at this point, Aerosmith realizes that even he doesn't have the money and the resources to exploit this design and really take it to market. So he sells it, the patents and all the rights, to a New York businessman by the name of Cortland Palmer for $10,000, circa 1849, probably. Cortland Palmer takes a look at this, and he thinks this is going to be the next hot thing in firearms development, and he contracts with the Robbins and Lawrence factory, a well-established arms production factory, to make 5,000 of these rifles. Uh, and he's going to become a wealthier man as a result. Except that he's not, because these things just don't sell very well. This design has not matured to the point that it's really ready for, for serious use yet. And in total, less than a thousand were made. Maybe less than a couple... well, not less than a couple hundred, but definitely less than a thousand of that 5,000 gun order were actually produced. And by the end, I mean, these things are... you can't sell them to anybody because nobody wants to deal with this weird rocket ball ammunition. Which, by the way, the ammo for this thing was a, a lead bullet, that had a hollow base, and the base had a propellant charge of black powder in it that was then sealed, and that would be fed out of a tube magazine on the bottom of the gun. You could cycle this ring trigger back and forth, and it would load a cartridge, and, and then you'd cock the hammer. Uh, and then you had a pill priming uh, uh, a cartridge, or a uh, container of pill primers in the top of the gun, and when you cycled this, it would load the cartridge, it would also load a primer, and then you'd cock the hammer, and you could fire it. It was an underpowered cartridge, it was a specialized cartridge. Nobody made this, except for Cortland, whoever Cortland Palmer gave a license to make it to. And, well, ammunition was hard to get for it. So uh, you can see where this problem is going. And even by the end of what portion of the production was even done, Palmer realized that this was not going well, and he needed some better way to sell the guns. So. They did something you can't really do today, and that is convert the guns to muzzle loaders. Presto, we don't need the special ammo. You can use standard primers. You can use whatever bullets and just regular gunpowder, and uh, and then you can actually sell the guns as something. Uh, it's kind of an awkward, weird muzzle loader with this ring trigger setup, um, and in fact. Once, once the factory started selling these things as muzzle loaders, they got rid of the ring trigger and changed the trigger guard configuration. But some of the early ones, like this, well, of this style, were converted to muzzle loaders, and a lot of the owners of these guns converted them to muzzle loaders so that they could actually shoot them. 
and this is an example. So uh, let's take a closer look. I'm going to pull the side plate off so you can see, well, where the internals used to be, because uh, that's, that's a cool indication that this isn't just a broken gun. I want to point out that the original Jennings rifles had a magazine tube under the barrel, um, and these things have ridiculously long barrels. However, when you convert this into a muzzleloader, you don't need a magazine tube, but you are going to need a ramrod. So, what did people do? They converted the magazine tube into a ramrod holding tube, and that's exactly what we have going on here. Now, for the action. One of the cool things about these is you can take these two screws out, and then the whole side plate of the gun comes off, and you can see what's underneath. So, let me prep you first. Here is a picture of what a Jennings repeating rifle should look like inside. All sorts of cool gears and cogs and widgets, and it's fantastic. Now, are you ready? Let's take a look in this one. Cock the hammer, we'll get this out of the way, and off it comes. And now that is a letdown, because there's nothing inside there. Uh, the breech has been sealed, so there originally would have been a bolt that would cam forward and back when you ran this trigger, that would load cartridges, uh, rocket balls from this magazine tube underneath. Uh, all of this stuff is just gone. At this point, um, in fact, it, it's hard for me to tell if this was a factory conversion or a gunsmith conversion, uh, but either way, what people were doing, certainly what the factory was doing, was using these castings that they certainly already had made and uh, putting in only what was actually necessary to make this a single shot muzzle loading rifle. So the way we can tell that this isn't just broken and missing parts is that the ring trigger part here has been modified substantially to work as a single shot trigger. So uh, this goes in and just slides back and forth. And then the sear is right here. So when this gets pushed up, it drops the hammer, and what you can see is they have added uh, this semicircular lump here in order to push on that sear. So this would have been the container for the pill primers, all that mechanism is gone. The cap's just here so you don't get things falling into the gun through that hole. Uh, and then this is now set up so we can cock the hammer, and when we pull the ring trigger back, the hammer drops. Finger out of the way there. Uh, and because of the shape of that half moon uh, firing sear on the trigger, it does actually get a little bit of spring tension. Um, the spring on the sear that is acting to hold it in place puts some resistance on that half moon shape so that you effectively turn it into also a trigger reset spring. On the original guns, of course, there would have been no reset because this was all manual operation to cycle the next rocket ball into the action. So. There you go. You now have a Kind of awkward and overbuilt, but now functional muzzle loader. I don't know what you're going to do with your Remington Etronics if you can't get electric primers for it, because you're not converting that thing into a muzzle loader. But this was a pretty cool solution for the time. And in fact, I think, as far as I can tell, there are a lot more of these muzzle loader conversions uh, still existing today than there are intact, functional uh, Jennings repeating rifles, because you just couldn't get the ammunition. So. If you owned one, it was either going to sit on the wall, or you were going to convert it into a muzzle loader. Well, if you'd like to have this one yourself, uh, hang it on your own wall. Uh, take a look at the description text below the video. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page for this piece. You can take a look at their pictures, and their description, and their price estimates. And if you decide you like it, you can place a bid over the phone, or through their website, or live here in person at the auction. Thanks for watching.